We'll call this study today, The Son of Man is Also the Everlasting Father. So let's go right into it in Revelation chapter 1. And we see there, starting in verse 10, the Apostle John says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. So he hears this voice, and uh, when he turns around to see who is speaking with him, and we'll start that in verse 12, And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Verse 13, And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man, one like the Son of Man. So John sees Jesus here, doesn't he? He says his head, or that he was clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So just describing what John saw, which he said this was the Son of Man. That's Jesus, of course. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shines in his strength. So, verse 17, John says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. So the sight of the glory of Jesus Christ was just too much. It overcame John, and it said that he fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. So that's what we are going to primarily be dealing with today. We made a video earlier about Jesus being the first and the last, but this will be a little different. So Jesus says, I am the first and the last. And verse 18, I am he that lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. So we know that when Jesus is describing himself as the one that was dead and is alive, we know he's describing himself from his humanity there. Jesus is man, as well as he is God, simultaneously. Not half man and half God, but simultaneously. Jesus is God and Jesus is man. But here, what we want to concern ourselves with mostly today is where he says, I am the first and the last. Because what we want to show in this study is that the Son of Man which John said that he saw in this vision, there in verse uh, 13, John said he saw the Son of Man. And then he talks about Jesus. And so I'm going to show you that the Son of Man, yes, he is the Son of Man, praise the Lord, but he also is the everlasting Father. We're going to show you this in Scripture today. And uh, hopefully you'll either follow along with me in your Bible, or you can write these things down and check it out for yourself when you get a chance. But now, with the fact in mind that uh, Jesus said, I am the first and the last, let's go to Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 6, and we'll start reading there. And Isaiah records, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. Now this is going to be really, really important. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. We're going to be talking about Israel's Redeemer. He says, I am the first, and I am the last. And beside me there is no God. Well, now Jesus took that for himself in Revelation 1, verse 17. When Jesus, the Son of Man, saw John the Apostle, he said to him, I am the first and I am the last. So, if that be true, if Jesus really is the first and he really is the last, then 
This is Jesus right here that we're looking at in Isaiah 44, verse 6. Because if that's not true, if Jesus isn't the first and the last, then Jesus doesn't tell the truth. And, you know, we don't believe in a God that doesn't tell the truth. So we know that this is true. So when Jesus said he's the first and the last, he's talking about what the very same thing that uh, Yah had said back in Isaiah 44, verse 6 to Israel. He said, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. So friends, that should eliminate more than one God right there, shouldn't it? Because this is Jesus, and he says, besides me, there is no God. So when they talk about what they call Jesus only, well, I guess they must be telling the truth. Because Jesus said, beside me, there is no God. So uh, with that in mind, and remembering what he also said there in the first part of the verse, that he is the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. So the Lord of hosts is the Redeemer. Jesus is the first and the last. So Jesus is the Redeemer, and Jesus is the Lord of hosts. So where we're going with this, of course, is to help our Trinitarian friends understand that there is only one God in this universe, and that's Jesus Christ. When we say that Jesus Christ is God, you know, what we mean is that Jesus is actually Yah, the God of the Bible. He's Yah manifesting himself. Yah manifested in the flesh. That was Jesus Christ. But Jesus in his deity, Jesus in his Godhood or Godhead, we could say, he is Yah, the only God in the universe. And Yah is the Redeemer of Israel, the Lord of hosts. But let's go now to Isaiah 47 and verse 4. And we'll read, As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. So now uh, we're getting more information about the uh, Redeemer. The Redeemer, it says here, is the Lord of hosts, which we read that in Isaiah 44, verse 6, that the Redeemer is the Lord of hosts. And Isaiah 44, 6 had told us that uh, the same one that is the Lord of hosts, the same one that is the Redeemer, is the first and the last. And we saw that according to the Apostle John, the one that's being talked about there in Isaiah 44, 6, appeared to him, and it was the Son of Man. So I think we can agree that uh, with uh, anybody that believes in the deity of Christ, that the Son of Man is the first and the last. Now the difference is, I'm going to show you that the Son of Man, who is the first and the last, is not the second person of the Godhead, or not the eternal Son, but he's actually the eternal Father. And so uh, let's uh, go ahead and conclude the study quickly like this. In Isaiah 63, verse 16, it is written, Doubtless thou art our Father. Well, who's he talking to here? Doubtless thou art our Father, though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledge us not. Thou, O Lord, Thou, O Lord, get ready for this. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer. Our Father, our Redeemer. So, friends, the Redeemer of Israel, according to Isaiah 44, verse 24, was the first and the last, the Lord of hosts. John said that that was Jesus. Jesus is the first and the last. So that makes Jesus the Redeemer. In Isaiah 47, verse 4, we saw that the Redeemer was the Lord of hosts, or the Lord of hosts was the Redeemer. So if the first and the last is the Redeemer, and Jesus is the first and the last, that makes Jesus the Redeemer, doesn't it? But here now in Isaiah 63, verse 16, we find out specifically who the Redeemer is. Now let's read that again. It reads like this. 
Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer. Those of you that are saying that Jesus is not the Father, stop and think about it. The Redeemer is the Father. Isaiah 44, verse 6. Isaiah 44, verse 6 tells us that the first and the last is the Redeemer. And we know that Jesus is the first and the last, right? Even Trinitarians would acknowledge that, although they are confused about what that means. But if the first and the last is Jesus, and the first and the last is the Redeemer, now we get to see who the Redeemer is very plainly right here. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 16. Let's read it again. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Father, our Redeemer. Friends, that means that Jesus is the Father. You know it does. That's exactly what it says. So uh, let's focus on that for a minute and not let it uh, escape us. Let's see, because it says here that uh, our Father, he says, Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer. So it doesn't say that God the Son is our Redeemer, and it doesn't say that the Eternal Son is our Redeemer. It doesn't say that the second person of the Trinity is our Redeemer. But it says, let's read it again, O Lord, our Father, our Redeemer. It's the Father that is the Redeemer. Jesus is the Redeemer. That makes Jesus the Father as well as the Son. See, the stu study is called the Son of Man is also the Everlasting Father. I'm not saying that He's just the Father, no. But I am saying that He is the Son and the Father. Now think about it. Where have you heard that before? Uh, where have you heard before that the Son is the everlasting Father? How about Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called what? Shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father the Everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. So the Son of Man is also the Everlasting Father. We see it right there in Isaiah 9, 6, but we also see it in this study that we've just done, starting in Revelation 1, where John sees that Jesus is the Son of Man. Then the Son of Man says He's the first and the last. So we went to Isaiah 44, verse 6, where it tells us that the first and the last is the Redeemer. So Jesus is the first and the last. He is our Redeemer. But then when we go, which we have done, and we go to Isaiah 63, we find out an amazing revelation about the Redeemer from the Old Testament. And it is, and we'll read it one more time. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer. Our Father and our Redeemer. So if Jesus is the first and the last, therefore making him the Redeemer, then Jesus is the Father, because the Father is the Redeemer. And just one more point here we could say about this verse. It says, Thy name is from everlasting. So when he says, Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer, thy name is from everlasting, doesn't that sound a lot like the everlasting Father? In Isaiah 9 and verse 6, the Son shall be called, His name shall be called Everlasting Father. Doesn't that verse remind you of this? Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer, Thy name is from Everlasting. Yes, that sounds like the Everlasting Father that's being talked about here. So I would have to say that, uh, yes, we now may conclude that the Son of Man is also the Everlasting Father.